I think we need to relearn how to move toward our dreams with trust, less pushing, more flow. And going with the flow isn't about being passive or being lazy. It's not about just letting things happen to you. It's not aimless. The flow that every mystic speaks of is life energy itself. It's the ocean of cosmic intelligence and love. And flowing with it is actually a co-creative act. So going with the flow is responding to cues and the support from the universe. You have to show up to it and respond. It's like when a woman tangos, you know, every inch of her body is flowing into the man's lead. She's not complying. She's responding. Um, I'll give you another metaphor. I'll give you a sports metaphor. Rarely use sports metaphor for me. Uh, you know, Wayne Gretzky, great Canadian hockey player, used to say that he skated to where the puck was. Flow was his strategy. So this means that we can be done with that do or die kind of goal chasing because when you set do or die goals, you know what's going to happen? You're going to do it and then you're going to die. And you can certainly worry less about making the right move or the wrong move when you're going with the flow. When you go with the flow, this is pretty woo, but you know, you're surfing life force. Everything is energy. If you don't think everything is energy, I don't think you're watching this right now. Can we all agree? It's all energy. So going with the flow is about a wakeful kind of trust. And at the same time, totally collaborating with what's showing up for you. It's, it's a dance. Uh, you're not submissive. Uh, you're not lazy. If you're going free form, you're actually really intelligent. You were hooking up with that wave of energy and truth over and over again. Yeah, it's, it's flow power. Your life is a container. So if your life is a container, then it's a package for life energy. It's a package for the flow. I think that's why we are embodied. That's why we are in these little suitcases we call bodies. We're here to be vessels of light, of the flow. I believe that we come into this dimension to be carriers of life energy, heaven to earth. We are here to create a better, more sacred, truer reality. Reality with a capital reality. That's the mission. And every mission requires a vision. Ideally, a vision that's born from the heart. So now that you're clear on your current desires, you have core desired feelings, you get to see how those can be expressed in what you do and experience and have and give, and you set some intentions, some goals to focus on, the outer world stuff. You have your core desired feelings, your inner world, and your heart to lead the way to the external. So let's hold the inner world and the outer world desires within a greater vision. How I want to feel, what I want to have and create, what's that going to look like? Most of us know how to visualize, how to see something clearly happening in the future. I know it's challenging for some of us. I'm going to help you with that, I hope. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn up the magnetism of a vision that we develop. We're going to create a visual. We're going to stir in our core desired feelings. Then we're going to add in the power of light and color. I'm going to bake that into that future image. So the secret sauce is our core desired feelings and the use of a light frequency. Let me talk for a second about color. Colors are the encapsulation, the embodiment, if you will, of a certain frequency of energy. So for those of you who are familiar with the concept of chakras, we know that each chakra has a different color. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo. I think there's more and more and more. Red has a certain vibration to it. You know this intuitively. 
indigo purple has another vibration to it. So when you're using color in a meditative practice, it's to bring that certain vibration, that frequency into that practice. And the colors that we're going to be using, a light pink, a white, a translucent gold, those all vibrate at a certain level. It's like, it's like every color has its own intention. And we want to weave that theme of intention into our visualizations. Secret sauce. Feelings are magnetic. What we radiate today is going to be reflected back to us in our future. So if you can feel it while you are seeing it, you increase your chances of having it. I feel like I'm creating my own sign language right now. Let me just say that again. If you can feel it while you see it, you increase your chances of having it. It's my own dance. All right. So here's what I'm doing. I'm bundling up everything that I have ever learned about manifestation, offering it to you. This practice is a layering of methods and insights that I have been taught over the years, that I have been practicing with over the years. I've worked with um, a very deep, experienced spiritual practitioner to really find this particular process for you. I really needed the backup to make sure I was getting the esoteric principles just right. This is an art and it is a metaphysical science. All right. Big, giant, colossal disclaimer that I'm proud to give you because I think a lot of workshop leaders who are teaching you how to manifest will not tell you this. Here's the word. Nobody, nobody can predict your future. Nobody. Because free will. Because chances with manifestation are, you know, they're chances. And we usually can't see below the surface of our own lives into our soul contracts and our karma and the lessons that we need to learn in order to evolve, the things that our soul has signed up for. And some of those lessons may mean that we don't always get what we want. I mean, most of my lessons, I'm going to put this in the past tense. Most of my lessons were that I didn't get what I wanted. That's what I needed to, to have for my own evolution, for my soul growth. We get what we need for evolving. So all we can do, and it's a great doing, it's a great and noble intention, but all we can really do is increase our chances of manifesting what it is that we desire. We can be more intentional, we can be more faithful, and we can choose elevated desires, desires of the heart. I want to say that again. I think it's really important. More intentional, more faithful, and elevated desires, desires of the heart. You're really setting yourself up to be fulfilled with that trifecta, that divine trifecta. That intentionality alone is going to light up your life. Even if you don't get what you want, you will be more lit up. Like you're just, you're winning when you set out with that. The rest of it, getting it, it's up to the great mystery. And ultimately our learning, and I mean our ultimate learning, is to relax, to receive what that great mystery is really trying to give us. I think it's the work of lifetimes, at least this one. But, and, we are here to create, to create healing and to create beauty and to evolve. We want to build pathways back to love, to find solutions that are sane and inclusive. We are here to learn to be well. So, in the spirit of collaborating with supreme creation and becoming more conscious and healing each other and the earth, let's do some visioning. Manifesting is about harnessing energy. It's a gift. It's a skill that's available to all of us. Now, I used to think and actually preach that you had to feel worthy of receiving what it was that you were asking for in order to get it. I do not see it that way anymore. 
I know better now. I think that lack of self-worth does not have to uh, squelch the quality of your devotion or um, the efficacy of your manifestation practice. I think a lot of us feel broken and blemished and not ready. And that is just part of the human story. But it doesn't take away from our intense love for life or God, however you want to call it. And with that kind of loving adoration for life, for God, we can work with creation to create what we desire. And what's more, and I found this out the hard way, I believe that God sees us as worthy from the beginning to the end without end. I think it's beyond that, actually. I think our worth doesn't even come into question with spirit. We are beloved. And if we show up with sincere hearts and good intentions, life will conspire with us to manifest love and joy into our lives. So you don't have to feel worthy. You just have to feel adoring, you know? Anyone can manifest bags of cash and a house on the beach. You know, you just have a vision and you focus like a mother and you do the work and you could get there. But I am not here to talk about getting more stuff uh, or getting more status. Although stuff and status can be a great part of a purposeful life. I like my status and I like my stuff for sure. And enjoyment of material pleasures does not make you a materialist. But I'm here right now because I am interested in what I have been calling a truer reality. I am interested in soul growth. I am interested, I am devoted to real love, capital real love. And I believe that generosity is a higher way of being. To give of ourselves, to give what we have to give, and to give it freely, oh, I think that's love. And goodwill is good karma. It's a universal law. At least that's what I think. So I'm taking my free will. I'm taking my capacity to be a leader right now. Everybody has that capacity to be a leader right now. And I am asking you to give generously of your love, profusely. I'm not asking you to barrel over your personal boundaries and to burn yourself out. But I do know some great workshops that will help you get that shit sorted. I'm encouraging you to be aware of the abundance in your being and of your current life. From the abundance of your kindness to all the love that's given to you all the time. The abundance of your growing consciousness, your ever-growing awareness. The abundance of your wellness. Whatever kind of prosperity you have, give from that. Give from that realness. And this is exactly why gratitude is a fundamental practice of desire mapping. Just keep being grateful. The universe is matching your vibration. Abundance is met with abundance. Generous people, we have more to give and we have more to receive. I'm not a mystic, but I am definitely in agreement with the great spiritual teachers. To give is to receive. When we bless others with recognition, when we bless them with our love, when we give generously, then we are given the powers to harness inner forces, inner world forces that vitalize our dreams. And the very effort, just the trying to harness that life force opens up the channels for greater incoming and outgoing energy. This requires some dedication to practices like meditation and prayer and contemplation, really a, a dedication to a reflective life. Those practices are how we keep our channels free and clear to receive and give. And by the way, you cannot give until you have received it. So the first principle, if you will, of desire map manifesting 
is to come from the heart. So it's like this. You can almost say this as a prayer. We intend to create from the heart and soul. We have a heart-centered vision. Heart-centered visions arise from a deep love, the deep love and the interconnected self of others. You know, uh, that's a place where there's an intrinsic fusion with all life. It's the life that pulses through all of us. That place, that heart-centeredness is compassionate. It's joyful. It feels naturally connected to everyone else, okay? So a heart-centered vision will naturally benefit the whole collective. It's not, it's not taking, it just naturally gives. Heart-centered visions arise from a place of awareness and light. So in contrast to that, an ego-centered vision arises from the shadow. Right, so heart is about light and consciousness. Ego visions come from the shadow, things we are not looking at. Ego-based visions often come from a place of lacking, from having to prove something, and that ultimately creates a division within ourselves. We turn away from our soul, we split inside, and it most definitely creates a division with the people around us, divisiveness. Ego-based dreams are often about needing to achieve something in order to feel worthy. Remember what I had said earlier, you do not need to feel worthy in order to manifest your heart's desire. Back to the heart-centered visions. A heart-centered vision, the kind that you're going to build here, it's a celebration of our inherent soul nature. What's that mean? It's rooted in higher values, values that uplift everybody involved. Your heart-centered vision, the ideal of your future life, includes love and wisdom and abundance and generosity and healing and a joy that ripples out. It's a vision that comes from love and it's deeply nourishing and interdependent. It's connected with everything around it. I know you're getting this. I know you feel it. Heart-centered visions help unite your inner and your outer world. So you're invoking, like a prayer, like a prayer, you are invoking your core desired feelings. That's the inner. And you are allowing them, because you're receiving the bawa, you are allowing them to manifest into reality, into the outer world. All right, so here's the next primary principle to desire map manifesting. Have faith and act on it. Okay, so as both is not enough just to have faith. I'm going to lean on some biblical wisdom here just to make this really clear because faith is a massive topic. So in Hebrews 11, it states, faith is the substance of of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Got it? So faith is believing. It is knowing that light exists even when it's dark. You can't prove it then and there, but you know in the deepest part of your being of its existence. You have faith. So with respect to manifesting, we're fostering faith that our desires will be made manifest. Doubt, it's a choice. Faith, choice. This is an invitation to choose faith. Faith is not enough on its own. You have to meet God with some action in this dimension. All right, so another biblical reference to make my point. This is from James chapter 2. Verse 14, what does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for their body, what does it profit? 
Thus, also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. I think what James is saying is you got to back that faith up with some action. Faith on its own, useless. Faith requires some care and some feeding. Think of faith like a blueprint. You know, faith is a blueprint of what you want to build. It's a track that you lay down in, in the substratum, in the inner worlds, that your vision then grows through and rises up through. The work involved, the building on that blueprint, that's the faith. It's the work of inner and outer devotion. And that means that you have to keep your heart and your mind and your body clean and clear. You have to be diligent. It's part of spiritual practice to be diligent, to stay well and vital, to keep removing the obstacles to love and to let your love flow into the world. It's, it's this rhythm, you know, of purify and give, purify and give and repeat. And that's the work that brings faith to life. All right, now we visualize. Well, you visualize. Working with visualizations is a metaphysical science and art, as I've said. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to visualize the fulfillment of your desire. So it's like this punctuated moment in your life that's going to say it all. So for example, let's say uh, you're an athlete. You can be just anything where you want to win a medal. So you're not seeing yourself training uh, to win the race. The punctuated moment is that you're seeing yourself and you're feeling yourself victorious. You are on the podium getting the medal. It's a completion scenario. So think about the best possible outcome of your goals and your intentions, those deepest desires, best possible outcome. And that's the scene. So what you're going to do on your own is you're going to create two or three, I always have three, individual, very simple visions. Think of them as your power vignettes. And of course, in each vision that you have, you know, you are feeling your core desired feelings. You are basking in them. You are embodying them. Those feelings are the spice of the vision. And it's the spice that's going to make the difference. The spice is what's magnetic. Once you decide on that final visual that you want to bring to life, you're going to treat it like it's a seed that has to be nurtured daily. It has its own gestation period. So the beginning and the end of it, its birth is when you get it. It's, uh, you know, it's just like a fertilized egg in the womb from inception until it's ready to be delivered. You stay with it. So once you craft that vision, you're going to keep nourishing it on a daily basis. If you are really committed, this is for like the real practitioners, then 21 minutes of visualization time that is like mega fertilizer. Are you the super devoted, super on the super, devoted on the devoted? Then you can do this consistently for nine months to a year. You just hold that vision and faith with your core desired feelings in heart and watch what happens. And let me just say, the very commitment of this practice is going to pay off in multiple ways. Here's an important metaphysical side note. Don't keep changing the vision. That's why you really want to spend some time with this and bake it in a really intentional way. It's like, it's like putting in an order at the restaurant, you know, and you change your order a bunch of times. All that confusion just means that you're not going to get a good meal on time. So craft your visualization. Trust it. Work with it. Don't change it. Just stay with it. So I'm going to make some suggestions on the themes of visions. Um, as I mentioned, I always have three kinds of visions that I work with. And again, these are just suggestions. So one scene 
might encapsulate your deepest desire? What's the greatest reality, the sweetest life circumstance that you want? All right, that's your ideal life. All right, so that's one kind of visual. The other scene um, would encapsulate your wellness and your vitality. So you're, you're covering your health and your body. And that third scene would encapsulate your abundance or your work in the world. It can be material, it can be immaterial, but it's how you, how you give and receive in this dimension with the world. When you're visualizing it, when you're in it, see it and sense it. Like what in the, what in your scenario can be touching you, the, the heat? Uh, what can you hear? What do you smell? Like really vivify it, you know? Where, see where you are, who's with you maybe, if anybody else is there. Um, consider the quality of light, the quality of air, the sounds you hear. Uh, you know, you really want your sensory nature to be active and alive. You're feeling it. All right. Then, this is the extra magic, because here, core desired feelings, feel it. As you're seeing the vision, as you experience the vision, breathe your core desired feelings through your heart. Oh, you know, just like imagining what I desire, seeing it in that poignant scenario, and I can just, oh, I just, I feel it in my heart, and I believe it makes a difference. All right, final ingredient uh, to the stew of manifesting. Stew as in something that's nourishing, not a mess. We're going to add color to the vision. You're in it. You're feeling it. You're breathing your core desired feelings into your heart and you're infusing your core desired feelings with the following colors. Light pinks, transparent whites, and golds, so pink light, white light, gold light, running through your heart, running through your core desired feelings, all right, while you are in your beautiful, ideal, entirely deeply possible future. Give thanks for that vision in particular, and then if you have other scenarios, go on to the next one. And then after your complete process, you release your vision. All right. So you give your visualization up to the sky, to the ethers. You just release it into pure space until it fully disappears from your sight. And then you let faith handle it for you. Um, you do not need to obsess about it all day. You just do your work of faith. You focus on faith, on purifying and giving, on keeping your vessel clean and ready and on generating your core desired feelings in your daily reality. And then always conclude with generous gratitude. Give thanks to all beings, seen and unseen, who are helping you manifest your heart-centered vision into reality. Thank you. <laughs>